joining this pediatric urology scenarios discussion thank you for the trainee who has agreed to record this session the scenario is you are referred a newborn baby age day 5 the reason for the referral is the pediatric surgeon has found a lump in the low back of the baby otherwise uh, patient is uh, passing urine well the examination showed bilateral descended testes so why there is a urology referral um, the urology referral is most likely due to uh, the possibility of uh, 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 development ab abnormality of uh, his lower spine, which might be a meningeal myelocele um, or um, uh, sacral agenesis, will, which will have um, uh, a significant impact on the patient's uh, urination. Um, and control of the bladder. Okay, so what are the possibilities, differential diagnosis for these lesions? Um, so, uh, meningeal myelocele, um, um, sacral agenesis. Um, uh, there could be like uh, meningocele seal alone, only the meninges may be bulging oh, out. Yes and uh, yes. maybe even like a skin or subcutaneous uh, big sebaceous cyst or some other lesions also not necessarily a meningo okay. myelocele you need to keep those things in the differential diagnosis okay so okay. this patient uh, let us assume has got meningo myelocele and um, how are you going to proceed further so i would like to uh, see this patient along with uh, the parents i would like to do a detailed uh, history uh, regarding uh, any prenatal issues childbirth uh, the, the the birth weight of the child, uh, any uh, abnormality that might have been detected on antenatal scans, um, any uh, family history of similar issues with uh, any siblings or uh, or parents. I would um, uh, then like to inquire about uh, 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 any maternal uh, factors, including smoking or uh, medication. Um, or uh, recreational uh, medication that might have uh, influence uh, on uh, the development of the child uh, in vitro, um, in, in utero, sorry. Um, I will then uh, want to uh, examine the child. I would like to examine the general physical appearance of the child, examine of the genitalia, um, including the t uh, uh, if it's a male or a female child, um, and uh, the examination of the back. Uh, I would also like to look, take a look at the, the he's a five day old uh, five day uh, uh, old child. So I would like to take a look at the movement of the limbs uh, and uh, any um, um, problems with uh, moving the lower limbs. Especially, I would like to look at the examine the back as well and palpate this uh, this 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 lump to differentiate if this if this could be a lipoma or a sebaceous cyst or if it's a meningocele or a meningomyelocele. You can also ask about the delivery of the baby history because if the lesion is large enough, sometimes it can cause obstructed labor and the patient may end up having emergency lower segment cesarean section. And um, examination showed bilateral well descended testes, extra genitalia normal, abdomen soft, blitz were normal, and uh, this uh, soft, boggy, uh, fluid filled lesion present in the lower sacrum corresponding to the sacral end of the spinal canal. So how are you going to proceed further? Um, so I would like to uh, do some investigations, including uh, a urine dip, urine culture if indicated, followed by um, um, uh, radiological investigations in, uh, like an MRI scan and an MRI spine to further delineate, delineate this, uh, uh, this abnormality. Okay, so in this context, you can just bring in your pediatric um, physician or even a pediatric neurologist because mostly they will be the primary people handling this baby. And so they okay. will be arranging an MRI scan and you will be closely liaising with them to find what are all the findings in the scan and how are all the urology implications. Okay. So the okay. MRI scan showed a meningo myelocyte involving the S1, 2, 3 segments of the sacrum. So what are the urological implications? Um, S123 uh, of, uh, of the sacrum, fine. Um, so the urological implication will be that this child um, will have uh, 
problems in gaining uh, control of his bladder. Um, um, and uh, this child, the likelihood is he might have a urinary retention um, or uh, uh, be in completely incontinent. He might have an impact on his uh, bowels as well and might never gain control of his, uh, of his bowels either. But as the child is only five, years or, uh, five days old, um, I would also like to uh, reassess him uh, periodically um, into uh, his um, um, uh, adolescence uh, to, to see the impact this child might have had and treat them, uh, the, 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 the resulting uh, impact accordingly. So at this point, you should be able to say that the level of the lesion possibly leads us to possible lower motor neuron dysfunction and then take the examiner into various lower motor neuron neurological problems possible in the bladder. So what are all the lower motor neuron changes which can happen if there is a bladder changes? Uh, so lower motor uh, neuron. So in broad what happens is lower motor neuron, upper motor neuron. So lower motor neuron means they are all the nerve supplies which is directly getting into the bladder. So if the lower motor neuron is um, severed or is the deficit means the bladder will become hypocontractile or acontractile. The upper motor neuron or the one which control the lower motor neuron. So if there is a problem in the upper motor neuron component, then the lower motor neuron will have an uncontrolled hyper uh, innervation which results in hypercontractile or patients can present with incontinence and high pressure, detrusor, etc. So that broad classifications you need to make with the clinical examination itself. Of course, further okay. treatment will be based upon the quantification test which you are going to arrange. So this patient clinically is supposed to have a lower motor neuron dysfunction, possible acontractile or hypocontractile bladder. How are you going to evaluate him further? Um, so um, I would want to um, assess him um, again in the future uh, when, he, when he's a bit uh, older uh, to see the clinical implications of his uh, uh, myrocele. Um, so be um, before getting into that, at the present stage you should make sure that his bowels are okay and uh, he should have a proper multi-departmental input, uh, pediatric nurse, everybody you can involve now because any problems in the bowel like uh, loaded bowel, the bowel also can have the same problem of decrease in the peristalsis because of the lower motor neuron yes, dysfunction. Yes. So the constipation, yes. loaded colon, these things should be taken care of because anything happens in the bowel will indirectly affect the print passage uh, micturation also. And uh, as far as the hypocontractive bladder is concerned, you may sometime have to start the treatment quite early and you may have to initiate the treatment so the patient will not go for uh, urinary retention and later like upper tract damage. So you can plan for urodynamics quite early, maybe like six months time so that the patient is at least big enough for catheterization etc. Or till the patient gets that uh, body weight gain, you can keep the patient at mm. least on the continuous draining bladder catheter so that the bladder is drained well or if the parents were nicely encouraged to perform intermittent self-catheterization. What precautions okay. you will take when doing urodynamics in a young baby like six month old? Um, uh, we need to make sure that the child is comfortable um, and the, the, the rate of uh, a fluid infusion uh, should be uh, uh, quite less. Uh, the, the approximate capacity of uh, the bladder can be um, uh, can be judged by uh, the patient age uh, plus one multiplied by 30. So that will be the, should be the total capacity of the bladder and uh, the, the bladder should not be infused with more than uh, uh, that amount of fluid. Um, so in this scenario, before even getting into the urodynamics, since the child is only six months old, you need to decide how are you going to do the urodynamics. Um, child because of the young age may accept the catheter because the urethra may be still insensate 
only the mm. children when they grow the sensation in the urethra becomes nicely developed so the catheterization could be possible but whether the child will cooperate for appropriate filling phase and uh, whether you want to do it like a video urodynamic so that you can demonstrate any reflex if it is there on the same time and uh, how are you going to demonstrate the voiding phase are you going to remove the catheter and uh, uh, see if the child voids by himself if not by using a creedis maneuver or you are going to do everything under ga so that the catheter is placed under ga filling phase is done completely under ga and then the child woken up catheter removed to see the voiding phase when the child is awake so you can discuss in these two things once we are doing the urodynamics as you said bladder volume is important so that the irrigation going in and uh, the filling of the bladder is appropriately tailored to the patient's calculated bladder volume okay okay and uh, the long term complications what happens say for example if the urodynamic shows a hypocontractile bladder but the bladder is emptying well what may be the long term complications um so if there is a hypocontractile bladder and the bladder is not emptying the child would um uh, would have to have uh, some sort of uh, management to keep his bladder empty or empty it uh, satisfactorily the child will have to be taught cisc initially the parents um and then the child as he uh, uh, gains uh, control over his bowels and his in his uh, urine um Uh, and the complications that can happen if the uh, bladder is not drained appropriately this this patient will might develop a high pressure bladder uh, that might result in uh, uh, further problems like uh, vesicourethral reflux recurrent infections uh, and and other significant uh, problems with the urinary retention okay you can try to imagine an adult with a hypocontractile bladder so as you said patient can have uti patient can require long term intermittent self catheterization or a continuous bladder catheter placement this can result in uh, vesicourethral reflux and upper tract damage patient may end up in early chronic kidney disease or in stage renal disease so you can discuss it more into the adult care you can say that you will follow up the patient and uh, appropriately hand over to the adult pediatric adult urologist at the age of 16 to 18 depending upon the local trust protocol patient needs uh, appropriate follow up with the nephrologist also parallelly okay 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 yes can we complete this yes yes okay